Praise the Lord, everybody. We want to welcome you to another session of the Worship Hour. I'm Pastor John Pope. And I'm Sister Joanne Griffiths. Amen. And we are so happy that you are here with us on today. We know that God has something in store for us. So we're waiting to see and hear the blessings of the Lord. So please stay tuned and wait for your blessing. You can praise with us. You can worship with us. You can tune in to us, but hear the word of God. Amen. So come on, everybody. Let's go to church. I can trust him today, and I can trust him forevermore. God is good. God is good. And all the time, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. We're going to get started with our service this morning. We're going to ask the choir if they will open us up. And as they open us up, I don't want you to just sit around and look at them. I want you to praise God with them. If you know the song, you can sing the song. If you don't know the song, you can clap your hands. If you don't want to clap your hands, you can stomp your feet. But whatever you do, just lift up the name of Jesus on today. Amen. Come on, choir. so worthy to be praised. There's none like our God in all the heavens nor in the earth. Because the Bible says that our God is from everlasting to everlasting. The Lord calls the God, our God, our shepherd. He is the one that leads us beside the still water. He makes us to lie down in green pastures. The God that we serve will anoint our head with oil. The Lord that we serve will prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. For he is the one that is worthy to be praised. Somebody said I'll go if I have to go all by myself. It doesn't matter if anybody goes with me, I'm going to say thank you, Jesus. 
It doesn't matter if anybody joins with me, I'm gonna say hallelujah. It doesn't matter if anybody wants to go alongside me, I'm gonna say glory to your holy name, Master, for you are so wonderful and so worthy to be praised. I know that one day there's gonna be a great getting up morning. And in that great getting up morning, we're gathered around the throne of God, the angels of God, and the heavenly host will be shouting, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We'll bow down before God and we will praise him from morning to night. We will thank him for his goodness. We will thank him for his grace. We will thank him for everything that he has done. I want to tell somebody that when you praise God down here, all you're doing is getting in practice for when you're getting ready to praise him up there. So I want to tell you that you don't want to be rusty when you get up there. So you might as well get your practice in down here. You in two a days right now. It ain't time for you to give up. It ain't time for you to quit. It's time for you to sweat it out. It's time for you to work it out. It's time for you to give God some praise. Come on, everybody. to be praised. Now I'm going to tell you, I pray that you don't give the Kansas City Chiefs more praise this afternoon than you're giving God right now. I pray that you don't give the Philadelphia Eagles more praise than you're giving God right now. When something good happens on that television, if you can't stand and praise God now, don't you stand and praise God in the middle of a touchdown. I'm going to tell somebody, I'm going to tell somebody, the Philadelphia Eagles never paid you one dime. The Kansas City Chiefs never paid you one dime. But God gave you life and breath in your body. But God gave you eyes to see. But God. Praise the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Amen. I'll go if I have to go all by myself. If you don't want to pray, don't hinder me. Scoot over some and get out of my way. You might talk about me, but I don't care. You might laugh at me, but I don't care. You might turn your back on me, but I don't care. Hey, come on and pray. I'm gonna worship it. Because it's been too good to live. You wasn't with me when I was out there in the cold in Saudi Arabia. You wasn't with me when I didn't know if I was gonna come back to my family. You wasn't with me. When I was down to my last dime, you wasn't with me when I was in the hospital. But God was. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. Hallelujah. 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 I'm not going to cry on this morning. No, I ain't going to cry this morning. I'm just gonna have me a good time in the Lord. I'm just gonna take a minute. Cause I thank the Lord for giving me a minute. I'm just gonna take a minute and say thank you, God. Hallelujah. I'm just gonna take a minute and say praise you, Lord. I'm just gonna take a minute and give God the glory. For he is wonderful and he is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for all he's doing. 
And I thank God for all he's done. But I want to tell you something. The half has not been told for what he's getting ready to do. The half has not been told for the spiritual blessings that are waiting on us in heavenly places. The half has not been told about the joy that we are going to experience when we get ready to see God face to face. Hallelujah. The half has not been told. So I'm looking forward to a better tomorrow. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. I'm going to ask you, my brothers and my sisters, if you would, if you would open up your Bible to the book of Colossians chapter 2. And we're going to take a look at verses 6 through 10. The book of Colossians chapter 2. And we're going to take a, a look at verses 6 through 10. Amen. We want to walk in the word of God. And this morning I had to go and take off my cowboy jacket. Because somebody might have been looking more at my jacket than they were listening to the word of God. And we want you to hear the word of God. Because in the word of God there is life. There is help. There is hope. And there is renewing. If you would stand in reference to the reading of the word of God from Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 10. If you have it, would you signify by saying amen? amen. If you need me to hold on, say, wait a minute, preacher. Amen. I'll read to you from the New King James Version. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit. Hallelujah. According to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of this world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. I'd like to speak to you this morning from the topic, a full life in Christ, a full life in Christ. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen and amen. Father God, we just come to you now in the name of your son, Jesus. And I just want to give you the glory, the honor and the praise. And thank you for everything you've done and everything you're doing. I ask you to be with us, oh Lord. To be with us as the enemy tries to stifle our praise. As he tries to get in the way of your blessings. Last week, dear Heavenly Father, we talked about living your best life. But now, dear Heavenly Father, you want us to have that full life and to know what that means in you. So I pray, Lord, that you would speak a word. And as you speak, God, I pray that you would give us all ears to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to do what thus saith the Lord. These and many other blessings we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, when we come to the house of the Lord, the Bible says that we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Amen. But you know, sometimes it's difficult for us to come and to praise God because of everything that we have going on in our own lives. Whether we want to acknowledge it or not, whether we want to accept it or not, Life has a dark side that is filled with both misery, anxiety, fear, sorrow, discouragement, hopelessness, depression, and loneliness. All of these negative emotions can occupy our minds. And whenever we experience something traumatic, these events, seem to overtake us. These emotions seem to overtake us. Doesn't matter whether it's the loss of a loved one or it doesn't matter if we've gone through a situation or going through a series of situations, 
that when we look at those things, they are just out of control. There's nothing that we can do about the situations. And every time, every time that we try to resolve the situation, try to get over the hump, try to get around the problem, it seems like we're unsuccessful in all of our attempts. And every attempt that we make where we fail to get around or get over the problem, it seems the problem gets heavier and heavier and it's just like a weight after a while that becomes too much for us to carry. See, the dark side of life can lead people to isolate themselves, give themselves over to various mind-numbing drugs, cause people to, to, to cut themselves or just put them in a place where they just want to give up on life. And I tell you, my brothers and my sisters, that if people stay in that dark side of life long enough, they basically lose their way in the darkness. They get so lost, they don't know which way to go. They get so lost, they don't know how to come out. But I got to tell you, you can find a way to combat the dark side of life. We can combat the emotional strongholds learned by learning to fight against the, the spirit or the feelings of helplessness and hopelessness. We got to learn how to fight. And some people say, well, Pastor, I've been fighting a long time. I, 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 I've, been, I've, I've been fighting, and, and, and you, you're telling me that i got to fight now, but, but I've been fighting a long time, and it doesn't seem like my situation is getting any better. I'm still struggling within myself with the same old stuff. But I want to tell you, before you throw in the towel, before you give up and before you quit, there is a way that you can overcome the darkness of life. Let me just share this illustration with you that I saw while watching the movie Creed II. And for those of you who may not know about that particular movie, the star of the movie, Donnie Creed is the world heavyweight boxing champ. And Donnie gets into a bout with his nemesis, Victor Drago. And Drago beats Donnie to a pulp. I mean, he beats Donnie. He leaves him bruised. And when Drago finishes with Donnie, Donnie is broken physically, physically broken, and he is broken emotionally. But Donnie recovers. And he defeats Drago. But the only way that he was able to recover, Donnie had to make some changes. He, can't, he couldn't keep fighting the same way he fought before. He even had to change coaches so he could learn about a different training style. Donnie even had to have a, develop a new mindset when it came to boxing. See, Donnie wanted to win, but in order to win, he had to make some changes. I think there's somebody in here that's trying to win right now. And I want you to know that if you want to win, if you are going to win, if, if you are going to recover, I want to introduce you to a new coach. I want to introduce you to a new way of fighting. I want to introduce you into a new mindset to help you to overcome your physical brokenness, to help you to overcome your emotional brokenness, to help you to be able to stand up when you got knocked down. But here's the thing. I can stand here all day and talk to you. But unless you're willing, unless you choose, unless you make a decision, to walk with the new coach, you'll never be able to move from the darkness of sorrow and pain 
to the light of joy and stability. You got to make a decision. See, Paul was telling the folks in Colossians, I want you to understand that there are some folks who don't mean you well. I want you to understand that they're, they're trying to lead you down a path that is not going to be beneficial for you. I want you to understand, saints of God, that instead of walking away from Jesus Christ, we have to learn to develop a closer relationship with Jesus Christ. Paul says that if for the believers in Colossae, you got to stay true to your relationship with Jesus to ensure that the church is going to be healthy enough to combat the forces of darkness. See, if the Colossian Christians were instructed to stay close to Jesus in order to win the fight, if the Colossian Christians we're instructed that they needed to have the right training in order to win the fight. If the Colossian Christians were instructed that they needed to have the right attitude to win the fight, can't you see how that will apply to all of us today? See, because all of us experience a dark side of life sometimes. I don't care how much money you got in the bank. I don't care how successful you got on your job. I don't care what kind of vehicle you drive or what kind of house you live in. Every now and then, all of us wake up and say, you know what, I really don't want to go to work today. I, I, I just want to stay right here in this bed. I don't want nobody to talk to me. Don't even whisper nothing in my ear. I just want to be in quiet. I want to be with my thoughts. And if you talk to me, I'm not responsible for the things that I say to you. I'm just telling you right now, the day is not the day. I don't want to hear it. Leave me alone. Anybody ever had a day like that? Anybody ever had a day like that? Yeah. You say, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, but I'm in a battle for my salvation right now. It's me and the devil. And if you don't want to get hit, if you don't want to become a casualty at war, you better stay out the middle of this thing because something's going on right here, right now. Every now and then, we got to learn how to fight a different way so that we can have that winning attitude. We got to learn that if we want to be on the winning side, that we have to have the right type of communion. And the right type of communion starts with having the right coach. Starts with having the right effort. And starts with having the right understanding. No matter how strong or how wise you think you are, we all need the right coach to keep us on the track to recovery. Colossians 2 and 6 says this, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. See, saints, darkness may lead you to walk alone, but that's not God's, that's not God's plan for you. God's plan for you is to be in communion with the Lord Jesus Christ. And in our communion with Jesus, we learn to trust someone greater than ourselves. We learn to trust someone greater than our thoughts because our thoughts can betray us. Our thoughts can make a mountain out of a molehill. We got to learn that we are not the end all and the be all. We have got to learn that we are not a bag of chips, all that and a bag of chips. We got to learn that every now and then, all of us need some kind of help. See, when we came to Jesus, we came to him because we realized that there was a shortfall in our lives. You say, no, Pastor, it wasn't a theory. 
physical shortfall. No, it wasn't a, 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 a financial shortfall. But what I had is I was morally bankrupt. I was spiritually poor. And I needed something else. So when I knew what I needed, I came to Jesus to get exactly what I needed. And when I came to Jesus, I came to him not because I was able to see him. No, at the time that I came to him, I came to him by faith and not by sight. I was walking on that which I could not see. I was moving toward the one who I could not see, but I knew that he was right there. I knew that Jesus was the one that could help me to deal with all my trials and my tribulations. Well, if you came to him by faith then, what's keeping you from continuing to walk by faith now? Jesus said it's important that when we get to our time of uncertainty, uh-huh. that we continue trusting in the Lord to lead us through the uncertainty to the hope that he gives us in life. The Lord has a lot in store for us. And when we walk with the Lord, he's like that great coach that will perfect the work that he started in you. Hallelujah. You know how it is. Sometimes we know just enough to be dangerous. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You go to the first grade and think you know all about trigonometry. You think you're a physics major. But you barely had your ABCs. The problem is when you know enough to be dangerous and you walk around thinking you know everything, you really are dangerous. Because you're going to wreak more havoc on other people and your own self. You're going to open your mouth at the wrong time. You're going to do the wrong thing at the wrong time and bring trouble down on your own head. That's why we need a coach that will perfect the work that he has begun in us. See, the Lord has taken us through a process of transformation. And he knows what we want and he knows what we need. Hallelujah. I said he knows what we want and he knows what we need. How many people want to stay in a mud hole? How many people want to stay in a pit? How many people want to stay in the throes of sorrow? How many people want to stay in the throes of pain? How many people want to stay in that place that is no good for you? Hallelujah. We all want to get out. But we got to have help to get out. I want to tell you something. When you have a good coach, you learn to trust your coach. You learn to trust your coach because your your coach may take you through some some things that might be a little painful. I can remember when I used to play football many years ago, Rev, and we had to go one-on-one. All the guys would line up on the outside, and they'd say, okay, John, you got the ball. And there's the linebacker. Uh uh Run through him. It wasn't one of them things where you can say, no, nah, coach, I don't want the ball. You take the ball, yes, sir. you hit him, uh-huh. or he going to hit you. Right. You take him head on, yes. you go at him as hard as you can. Uh-huh. That's what we got to do in life. When the coach gives us the ball, guess what? Uh-huh. He may take us through some things that may not be so pleasant. But when you have that moment, where you get right under that linebacker shoulder pads and you raise that sucker up off his feet and you take him backwards, boy, it feels good. It feels good. He might flip you over, but you can look back and say, I laid you on your back, hallelujah. Take the ball. Trust the coach. Because the coach is not trying to work to hurt you. The coach is working from a spirit of love. Jesus Christ is working from the spirit of love. And as we know that he's working from the spirit of love, we can put our faith in him. We need to have that communion with the Lord that's built on the spirit of love. 
I'm so glad that Jesus Christ came and he died to take away the sins of the world. I want to tell you something. Now that he has taken away the sins of the world, let me, let me take this weight off of your shoulder. We walking around with all kind of weight. Let me have that over there. Let me have that. We walking around with all this weight on our shoulders. And it's weighing us down. Over here, I got guilt. Because I done let somebody down. Over here, I got shame. Because I didn't do the right thing that I needed to do. And every time I try to lift that weight up, it falls back down on me. And as it falls back down on me, I crumple more and more under the weight. But I want to talk to somebody. If you got Jesus in your life, Jesus died to take away all your guilt. Jesus died to take away all your shame. So all that guilt and shame that you feel about what happened on yesterday, how you let somebody down and how you couldn't come through for this person, all the guilt and shame that you feel about the stuff that you used to do that you knew that you wasn't supposed to do, I want to tell you that if you got Jesus, the blood of Jesus has washed away all your guilt and washed away all of your shame. Hallelujah. If you know that he's washed away all your guilt and washed away all of your shame, then you can walk with the coach and know that the coach is going to lead you in the right direction. Yeah. The Bible says, so walk ye in him. We want to walk with Jesus because his relationship and our relationship is built on love. We can walk in faith with him. The Lord says, what I do will help to make you strong. Yes, sir. God says, I'll make you strong because you are part of the family of the living God. Yes, sir. The Lord says, you are no longer ostracized. You are no longer on the out. But what I've done is I brought you into the family of the living God. And as you are a child of the living God, I want you to understand that I'm putting strength down in your body. I'm strengthening your physical body. And I'm strengthening your spiritual body. God says I want you to know who you really are. It's time for you to stop walking under the lies of the devil and saying, I'm going to get beat up today. No, you're not going to get beat up today. If anybody's going to get beat up today, it's the devil and his demons. I want to tell somebody that because you are a child of the living God, you ain't even got to do the fighting. The Lord says, I'll send ministry angels to fight for you. God says, I got the Holy Spirit to fight for you. The Lord says, I'll be your shield. I'll be your fortress. I'll be your refuge. If you need anybody to do any fighting, call on your father. Call on our father. Call on God Almighty. Call on Jehovah Jireh. Call on the one who is able to help you with the issues of life. It says, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus, so walk ye in him. Well, pastor, okay. All right, I'll take that, I'll take that, I'll take that. I got to have the right coach. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready to listen to the right coach. But now the Lord says, now you got to apply the right effort. Hallelujah. Because when old Creed had to go back, old Creed had to go back to a different type of training camp. He couldn't go to the same training camp that he went to before. He had to go to a training camp that was going to teach him how to be hard. Going to teach him how to, to harden his body. Going to teach him how to harden his will. We got to learn to have the right effort if we're going to stand up to the trials and the tribulations in life. Paul said that we needed to be rooted and built up and established in the faith. I like that because when you look at these three principles, that word rooted built up and established all refer to us being grounded firmly grounded in our faith see the problem that many of us have is that we're not grounded in our faith we're too easily persuaded 
by the things of this world. We're too easily driven away from the things of God. But Paul says you got to be grounded in your faith in the Lord. Paul says then when you're grounded, you can receive positive instruction. You can receive correction. You can receive the help that you need to help you overcome the crisis that you're going through. See, the roots of a tree go down into the earth. And as it goes down into the earth, the roots of the tree will stabilize the tree. But they don't just stabilize the tree. The roots draw sustenance from the earth. They tap into the nourishment of the water system. And, and I want to tell somebody, if you want to tap in, here's the system that you tap into. Tap into Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Jump over to the New Testament. Tap into Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Tap into 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. Tap into Hebrews and James. Tap into Revelation. We need to tap into the spiritual thing. If we're going to be able to fight the good fight, if we're going to be able to be strong, if we're going to have a new mindset. See, the dark side of life tries to bring in despair. And despair wants us to believe that God has abandoned us and does not care. But when I look over in the Isaiah chapter 61, verses 2 and 3, I'm going to tap in, Rev. I want to tap into the word of God. God, what is your will for me? God, have you left me alone? God, do I have to fight my battles by myself? No, God says what I want you to do is I want you to know that I want to be your healer. God says I'll bring you comfort to all that mourn. God says I'll give them beauty for ashes. God says I'll bring the oil of the joy of for mourning. God says I'll put on you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. God says I'll take away all that stuff you're going through. Just tap in, just tap in, just tap in. See, God says he doesn't want you walking around in a perpetual state of mourning. God doesn't want you to feel like you're all by yourself. God says, I got somebody. I got somebody. But the problem that we have is we got, we've got the word with us every day. But a lot of times the word just sits on the kitchen counter sits on the coffee table in the living room. If you pick up the word, you'll see that underneath the word is clean, but the rest of the coffee table is dusty. The word gotten dust all over it, and because you've never used the word, it's like having a million dollars in the bank, but never going to draw out any money and walking around talking about you broke, busted, and disgusted. No, you're not broke, busted, and disgusted. You just foolish. Amen. Hallelujah. All you got to do is go and tap into the word. And when we tap into the word, God says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. God said that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning of life. The Lord said, tap into the word and I'll let you know that I'll cover you under the shadow of my wing. God says, tap into the word. Tap into the word. God said, when you tap into the word, when you start to get down, then you can begin to sing psalms to yourself. You won't have to worry about the choir singing. You'll be able to sing, walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me. Walk with me while I'm on the teacher journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. The devil might be on your heel, but you get to sing in the songs and you get to sing in the hymns. And although the devil is on your heels, then all of a sudden you start walking upright. Yeah. Then all of a sudden you have a smile on your face. Yeah. The devil said, what's going on? on. I thought I had him. Yeah. That's right, you thought you had me. Yeah. But I'm walking with 
the Lord God Almighty. I got a good coach. I'm engaged in the right effort. So I know I'm going to make it. Hallelujah. See, God says, I'll help you change your mindset. It might be raining outside. But instead of saying, woe is me, it's raining outside. You walk around saying, thank you, God, for letting the rain fall on the just and the unjust. Thank you, God, for letting the rain fall on the evil and the good. You'll turn all that stuff around and say, I'm engaging in the right effort right now. I used to be down on myself. But I, God says in Proverbs 4 and 7 that when we go after wisdom, we got to not only get wisdom, but we got to get understanding. Yes. We got to understand that sometimes good things, evil things are going to come to the good people. But yes. just because they come to the good people doesn't mean that you're defeated. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Job lost everything that he had. But by the time you get to Job 42, God gave Job double for his trouble. Hallelujah. I want to tell somebody, you may have been down for a little while, but stay with the Lord. You may have been hurt for a little while, but stay with the Lord. Your double is coming. Hallelujah. Your blessing is coming. Hallelujah. Your sunshine is coming. Hallelujah. Your joy is coming. Hallelujah. Stay with the Lord. Stay tapped into the root and watch what God will do for you. Hallelujah. God wants some people that got to, that got on a miner's cap. Come on. You know what I mean by a miner's cap, that hard hat yeah, that's got the light on it. Yeah. And the miners used to wear that cap when they went deep down into the mine. Yes, God said it's time for, the, for us to go deep down into the mine. It's time for us to start digging for that wisdom. It's time for us to start digging for that spiritual power. It's time for us to start digging for that anointing. It's time for us to start digging for the things of God, just like we dig for silver and gold and precious metals. God says, I need some miners in the camp. We got any miners in the house that want to dig for God's blessings? Hallelujah. God says, you not only need the right coach, you not only need the right uh, effort, but you also need the right understanding. See, when we get the right understanding, we go back to the word of God. God says that we got to be grounded in the word. Grounded in the word. Somebody say grounded. grounded. See, we can't be tossed to and fro by every wind and doctrine. We got to be grounded in the word of God. And people get lost in the ways of the world. Because instead of being imitators of God, they want to imitate life around them. They drinking and falling down drunk. So I'm going to drink falling down drunk. They smoking and shooting up. So I'm going to smoke and shooting up. They lying and stealing. So I'm going to lie and steal. They cheating on their spouse. So I'm going to cheat on my spouse. You can add a whole bunch of other stuff to that list. So don't think just because I didn't name your vice, hallelujah, that you off the hook. Amen. Hallelujah. When you dig in the word of God and you find your vice, you say, oops, that's me. Help me, Jesus, to overcome my vice just because they doing it. How many of y'all had mothers and fathers? Mama and daddy gave you a rule. And you chose not to follow that rule. And then you went home and they said, what were you thinking? And yet, and you foolish, foolish, foolish child that you are, said, mama, well, so-and-so was doing this and that. And mama and daddy said, well, I ain't that mama and they daddy. I told you to do this. Just because they did it doesn't mean that you can do it. Just because they're acting foolish doesn't mean that you can act foolish. 
The Bible says that when we know to do good and do it not, then it is sin. Hallelujah. So stop trying to blame everybody else for your shortcomings. Stop trying to blame everybody else for your problems. Stop trying to blame everybody else for your issues. It's time for us individually to make our own decisions and to choose whether we're going to live for Christ or live for the world. We got to stop running around listening to the atheists saying there is no God. We got to stop running around listening to the humanists saying that, hey, man doesn't have to be concerned about God's ways. Man is able to make moral decisions on his own. On. We got to stop running around listening to the, mock, the, the, the Gnostics saying that, oh, if you don't have a special type of knowledge, you can't gain salvation. Those are all men's philosophies and men's ways of thinking. Amen. We don't adopt men's philosophies and men's ways of thinking. If we want to have hope in this world, if we want to have hope in this world, we need Jesus Christ. Because we like to sing, my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. If we want to walk and be free from the darkness of life, we got to understand that in Jesus is the fullness of the God he is. See, our Lord has all power in heaven and in earth. And I got to walk with this for a minute because we got so many people that are going through these rough times. They walk in and in these, they don't know how to navigate these rough seas. They don't know how to overcome these issues of life. They say that, well, just because he has a Ph.D. behind his name, he must know everything. Well, just because he's got this position in the world, he must know everything. But I want to tell you something, regardless of whether he has a Ph.D. or whether he has a position in the world, if he doesn't have G.O.D. and the things are not lining up with G.O.D. said, then you need to be careful about what you engage in. Hallelujah. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But the only way that you're going to know the truth is you've got to search for the truth. On. The only way that you're going to know the truth is we have to commune with the living God. The only way that we're going to know the truth is we've got to walk with the living God. I want to tell somebody, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. Jesus is the light of the world. And if we stay in commune with Jesus, then we can move from darkness into the marvelous light. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful yes. that Jesus is the Lord of Lords. Yes. I'm so thankful, thankful that he is the King of Kings. Yes, sir. I'm so thankful yes. that even though I used to fight one way, yes, sir. that Jesus says I'm going to show you how to fight another way. Yes. I'm so thankful yes. that when I walk out the door that I'm not walking out alone. Yes. I'm so thankful yes. that God thought enough of me and you to send his only begotten son yes. that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but would have everlasting life. Yes. I'm so thankful yes. that God says I want to show you the way yes. even though you may not know the way. Yes. I'm going to send you a help me to walk beside you. Yes. He is the new ma. Yes. He is the Holy Spirit. Yes. He is the Holy Ghost, and he is going to guide you into all truth. Yes. I'm so thankful that when I go through my trials and my tribulations, yes. Jesus said that I can call on the Father, yes. and he would be my Jehovah Jireh. Yes. He would be my healer. Yes. He would be there to help me through. I'm so thankful yes. that the Lord can identify with my struggles. Yes. I have a great high priest who knows what I've gone through and knows what I'm going through. And because he knows what I'm going through, he's able to intercede on my behalf before the Father. I'm so thankful that there is a blessing that is yet waiting on us. There's a blessing that's waiting on us that one day, I said one day, we're going to move beyond this physical dimension. One day, we're going to move into the spiritual realm. One day, we're going to take off this body of corruption. One day, 
we're going to put on the body of incorruption. I'm so thankful that one day we're going to be able to stand before the Lord. And as we stand before the Lord, we're going to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. characterization and in the characterization that I got from the Lord he said that I am a victor he said that I am an overcomer I'm so thankful I'm so thankful that the God I serve has me in the hollow of his hands no matter what trouble may come no matter what problems may come no amount of trouble no amount of problems can snatch me out of the hands of the living God. I'm so thankful that he watches over me in the morning, in the noonday, in the afternoon, and in the midnight hour. I'm so thankful that I can call on my God. I can dial 111, one for the Father, one for the Son. One for the Holy Ghost. He won't be like Optimum. He won't be like Frontier. He won't be like Suddenly. His line will never be out of service. I'll never get a busy signal. He'll always answer. He'll always answer. And I'm so thankful that God doesn't say yes all the time.
No weapon. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Start speaking that over your own life. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Speak it over your own life. Speak it over your own self. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Amen? Amen. have a decision. Each of us has a decision to make about how hard we are going to fight. You can roll over, play dead, and your issues will eat you alive. But if you fight with the Lord on your side, God will fight your battles. He'll help you. I'm telling you, he will help you. I've been there. I've seen it. You've heard me say before, there was a time in my life when I just went home. I sat in the dark. I pulled the shades down because I didn't want nobody to talk to me. I couldn't see my way out. So God had my back. He said an angel to my heart. He said, now I'm going to walk with you. I said, I don't, wanna, I don't want you to walk with me. Leave me alone. He said, I don't care what you want. I'm walking with you. And he brought me out of that darkness into the marvelous light. It's gonna prosper. Start speaking that over your own life. No weapon formed against me is gonna prosper. Speak it over your own life. Speak it over your own self. No weapon formed against me is gonna prosper. Amen? Amen. You know, sometimes when we are dealing with different struggles, Sister Joe, it gets to be tough. And we don't know how we're going to make it through that struggle. Right. But God's word always has kind of either an exit strategy or something that would propel us forward. Yes. And that's where we are today. He's given us both an exit strategy and something to propel us forward. So we are looking forward and we pray that you heard it because you may be going through something. You may be trying to deal with it and you need to trust God. Let him be your coach. Let him show you the right way and let him show you the right effort to put against your struggle. And we know that God will help you through. Joe, Sister Joe, can you tell somebody about one of the services they can come to here at Galilee? Absolutely. We have several to choose from. From <laughs> On Sunday mornings, we do have Sunday school beginning at 9 a.m. Uh, we invite you to bring your children out, bring your whole family out um, for some uh, Sunday school lesson. On Wednesdays, we have our Bible study, and that begins at 615 and we've got choir and we have lots of other ministries uh we would like you to come and join us and see where you fit in amen and you can join us for the worship hour every sunday at 10 a.m we would love to have the opportunity to love on you we're always here 721 west 19th street if you get a chance come on by god bless you and god keep you is our prayer we hope to see you again next week as we engage in the worship hour have a blessed day